Hey, it's Rick again. And in this section, uh, we're going to be looking at how to create a user. Now, the users and the phone extensions are not necessarily one thing, okay? Uh, you can create an extension without having to create a user, and you can have, but you really can't have a user without having an extension because um, it's kind of pointless for somebody to be able to go into a phone system and not be able to make or receive calls. So, but again, you can make a phone extension without a user because you can assign a phone extension just to a, a soft phone and they can use it just like a regular phone. The user will allow them to use the system. So to create a new user, uh, we're going to go to users and we're going to click on add a new user. All right, now the user number doesn't necessarily have to be a number. It can be a name if you need it to. Okay, what I like to do personally, just so when I look at all my lists and I look at my users and extensions and everything, I like to correlate everything. So I use the user number as the extension. So let's say we're going to create extension uh, 6000. All right, so this user is going to be 6000. I'm going to give it a password and we're going to call it password. Okay, the full name is, we're going to call it test agent. Now the user level. Each user level has a little bit of more access than the other. Uh, the only people that can access the administrative portions of the system to be able to see what we're looking at here is user levels 8 and 9. Okay, For all sakes and purposes, if they're just going to be agents, level 1 will be perfect. If they're a supervisor, then you want to make them a level 8. reason for that is you just want them to access the administrative portion of the system so they can look at the reports. Okay, But we are creating an agent, so we're going to use user level 1. Uh, user group. Uh, now the user group, remember, will designate what campaigns they're allowed to. Whatever campaigns are allowed in that user group, this is what this agent will be allowed to use. Uh, we are going to create a phone extension for them. So we're, the phone login has to be the extension. So it's, we're going to call it 6000 also. And the phone pass is basically the password they want to use for the system in case they want to access that extension through the system. This is not the same as the SIP registration password that you'll see later on. Okay, so once we have all this information in here, uh, you want to hit submit. Now, um, again, you have other options here where you can designate. Now, you can designate the voicemail IDs through the extensions, or you can do it through the user here. Uh, you can designate an email. Uh, here, the stuff that we really need to look at is going to be this. Uh, the in-groups, in case they're getting into an inbound, do they want them to choose the in-groups in case they have multiples? Normally, if we assign an agent to a campaign and this does have in-groups assigned to it, then you don't want them picking and choosing which ones. So we leave this at zero so they have no choice. They also have, let's leave this at zero so they have no choice if they want to see blended. Um, hotkeys are shortcuts that so we will go into our more advanced training. The schedule callbacks, you want to make sure they're able to do that. Make sure that they only have agent-only callbacks so nobody else makes their callbacks. Uh, if they want to make manual calls, a lot of times uh, people get a little icky because um, if they need to make a manual call for whatever X or Y reason, you know, you, we want them to stay away from using the actual SIP phone. We want them to use it through the system. So what this allows is allows them to make manual calls through the system where they'll be able to hit a link that says manual call, pop in an area code and phone number, and go ahead and call that number. You want to make sure that the transfers and the recordings are active, and let's always make sure that they're always close or default blended. So we choose that for them. We want to make sure they have no override privileges. Um, again, all this is just for them to see administrative rights. Since this is a user number one, he's not going to have no administrative rights. But you do want to make sure that the API access is active. Okay, this allows for the for the schedule callback tools and another couple little features to work properly. So once we submit, uh, we have created user 6000 under the user group sales outbound. So now we can go back in here, and now we're going to see that we have no other options okay now if you see here okay if you have any inbound groups created already and you have them assigned that we will go into later this is where you will select what inbound groups are going into and this will tell you what campaigns that they are allowed to work see if the, you can have a, an agent work multiple campaigns now they can work multiple campaigns at the same time but they can log into different campaigns so this is where you would tell them a rank which ones will show up first and which one will show up depending on how many calls that they're getting. Now once we have created them, we have submitted and we have created a user.